Welcome in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I pray the Lord's blessing upon your house and your home. Let's make our beginning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Let's read together Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Stretched out the skies like a canvas Who has scooped up the oceans with his hands Who has measured the hills from the mountains Yo 
They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe, and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. Selling their possessions and goods, they gave to anyone as he had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. I tell you the truth, the man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The man who enters by the gate is the shepherd of his sheep. The watchman opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice but they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Let's confess together our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy, Christian, and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. the word at the beginning one with God the Lord most high your hidden glory in creation 
Heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of His hands. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they display knowledge. David was right. God's heavens reveal Him in all of His glory every night and every day. But the infinite reality of the heavens raises this question of David. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars, which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? What are we? How can the Lord give David a moment of thought, let alone have time enough to care for him in this vast universe? And even more so today when you consider the population of the planet is now 7 million plus people. And this God, the Creator, this Lord, can somehow number the hairs on every head? It makes you wonder. It makes me wonder. Who am I? Who are we that the Lord of the universe should pay such close attention and offer such intimate care? The same author of Psalm 19 and 8, David, wrote this in perhaps the best-known chapter of the Bible. The Lord is my shepherd. Can you hear David's 
personal faith shining through in this first verse of this beloved psalm. When you make that your confession about Jesus, the Good Shepherd, you do so because you know his attributes and qualities. Here's the first one Jesus mentions. John 10, 14. I am the Good Shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. The Lord is my shepherd. He knows me, one of his sheep. Earlier in that same chapter, Jesus said, He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. He knows his sheep personally. He knows his sheep intimately. David writes in Psalm 139, O Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O Lord. Your shepherd knows you better than you know yourself. He knows you better than anyone else knows you. Even when life becomes confusing and you don't know how to pray, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. He gives you the gift of the Spirit for your weaknesses. The Spirit who intercedes by bringing your prayers to the Father, aligning with his will. Thy will be done. As one of our hymn announces, he knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. He knows not only our weaknesses, but he also knows and sees every sin, even the sins that are often not known to us, because nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. Maybe that's what makes Jesus such an awesome shepherd. Even though he knows our sinful hearts, he does whatever is required in order to win back our soul and turn us back into his flock under his care. It's so easy for us to take lightly what our Lord, our Savior, has done for us. But in order for Jesus to become our good shepherd and to bring us back into the flock under his care, Christ had to purchase us first. And bear in mind, he didn't open up his wallet and pull out a credit card and swipe it like we do. Luther writes this in his small catechism. Jesus purchased us to win us from sin, death, and the power of the devil. He couldn't win us back with silver or gold. No, he had to use his own precious blood. He offered it to God, his innocent suffering and death. Luther borrows the words from Peter who wrote, For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your forefathers but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him, you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him. And so your faith and hope are in God. He is your great shepherd because he willingly paid the price to be your savior. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Greater love has no one than this. I see him pointing to his cross, that he lays down his life for his friends. No one will ever love you more than our good shepherd Jesus loves us. But can I invite you to take a moment to assess your relationship to the Good Shepherd Jesus, to Jesus and his flock, the church? 
Are you staying close to the Good Shepherd? Close enough to hear whatever he calls? How do you respond to his authority? Do you acknowledge his ownership as shepherd, as Lord of your life? Are you finding fulfillment in being one of his sheep, his lamb, and a member of his church? Do you come to him for peace and rest? Are you eating of his green pastures in his word and sacraments and finding peace and rest in his still waters? Oh, how this Christ, this shepherd desires to reclaim every lost sheep and every lost lamb. He doesn't want to lose you, which is why he placed this mark upon you in your baptism, so that you might belong to the good shepherd and be a part of his flock, the church, sealed by his spirit. Oh, how he desires to keep you in his grace and show you his mercy through the forgiveness of your sins. He stands ready to bless you with his care and keep you in his love. He's hoping you'll stay close to him, connected to his flock, the church, so that when he, the chief shepherd, appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. Oh, how he loves you and me. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending Jesus to be our chief shepherd. We praise you for your grace that called and claimed us to be a part of your flock, your church. Give us contentment as sheep in your flock and members of your church. Give us the gift of your spirit, not only to abide in our hearts, to draw us ever closer to you and one another, but also to lead others to know your great mercy and shepherding love eternally. We lift up all those who are affected by this pandemic. Touch all those who are sick with your healing hand. Especially, we pray today for Earl Kane, Betty Huggins' brother, fighting COVID-19. We, we pray, place, we place him in your care to bring healing according to your will. We ask your comfort for the family of Mary Bidwell, who passed away recently. Mary is Betty's, Betty Huggins' sister. Comfort her family in the knowledge of everlasting life in Jesus' name. We pray, O oh God, for a swift and complete end of this virus, as only you know best for each life and for this, your world. Let your church rise up in these days to bring you glory, honor, and praise as we share the name of Jesus with the world and shine the light of our faith and love where it is needed most, that all men may be found by the Good Shepherd, in whose name together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. May he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in all oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me, who the sun sets free, oh, it's free I'm a child of God, yes, I am. Free at last. 
last he has ransomed me, oh, his grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, he died for me. We will also be offering online live worship and YouTube recorded worship following each of the services next week. So if you're unable to be with us, it's okay. We hope you'll be here. Be watching in an email and on our website for more information. Go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a blessed week and be safe in the hands of the Good Shepherd, Jesus.